Jackie Che uh, came into working with the uh, Desjardins Lab uh, a couple years ago? 2012. And uh, turns out her desk used to be next to mine. And uh, <laughs> service <laughs> her desk is still next to my old desk. Um, so I, I used to work in the Desjardins Lab, now she's there, and she is working on her grad work there. Um, Dennis David and the author, one of the co-authors of California Mushrooms. And she is doing her work down in Madagascar. Um, I believe she chose Madagascar because it is about the furthest point where you could possibly go from California, and I told her, if you're going to go look for something, go far. And, you know, this is your opportunity to really branch out. I took it to her. You, she did take it to her. <laughs> and so she is, like myself, a we're, we're uh, ex Peace Corps volunteers. And so I knew no matter what, she could handle anything, including Dennis Day's right now. <laughs> <laughs> And so she is here to tell us the tales from down under, way down under, and over. Down <laughs> over and hey, Oh, and uh, one last announcement. Wine glasses, please, they need to go back to the back so they can be in the, box. in the boxes so they can be rinsed and washed. Lights. Yeah, maybe these I think lights. we can turn just these on and I'll over it up. Pretty sure. Is it that fun? Back there, there's one over there. Oh, is there? There you go. Awesome. That's way better. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So my name is Jackie Shea, and I went to Madagascar for a month in January and February of 2014, so last year. And it's been a bit since then, but I wanted to share what I saw while I was there, especially the different types of mushrooms. And I really thought that, that would be a great way to kickstart our 2015 fall season. We'd be just kind of kick back and relax and look at some beautiful pictures of some mushrooms. And uh, I should say right off the bat that the mushroom pictures are not mine. They are Danny Newman's pictures. He came with me to Madagascar. He was our librarian and now he is off to New York for a brighter future. And uh, so all the credit goes to him for most of the uh, fungi pictures. And if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to interrupt me. I'm very okay with that. That's totally okay with me. So who am I? Uh, this is my background. I uh, studied microbiology at the University of California in Merced. I was part of the very first class there. The campus opened in 2005, and that was my freshman year in college. So I sort of had this background pioneering university. Uh, after college, I went to the Peace Corps, which Brendan mentioned, in Morocco. So this is a picture of me on a famous beach in Morocco. Uh, and I decided that I wanted to learn more about the world around me, and I sort of stumbled upon fungi in this really backwards way, and I contacted Dennis and uh, applied to be in his lab, and he took me in against all odds. <laughs> and so I started in his lab in 2012 to study fungal evolution. And in case you didn't know, I am currently the Vice President of the Mycological Society of San Francisco. So uh, Brennan and I are your new leadership, uh, both uh, Genesis students, so you know, so we're slowly infecting my Society. <laughs> <laughs> he has more control than you know. <laughs> I have a question about that previous picture. Yeah. What's that giant white mushroom right behind you? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're so observing. This is the beach, and it's, it's called the Zira. It's on the beach of Morocco, and it's this, these incredible shapes that have been eroded over time through the waves crashing in, and there's just like a series. Unfortunately, you can't see it, but there's a series of just these domed cliffs where you can walk underneath, and the, the, coast, the beach is right on the left there of the um, Atlantic Ocean. It's pretty cool. So my project, what am I doing? Uh, I am studying Merasmus from Madagascar, and this is a beautiful picture of uh, one of the most, I think, just the prettiest Merasmus uh, subsection, Genetocephaly. And I decided to study Merasmus 
for the following reasons. One, because it's uh, the city of my seat responsible for decomposing leaf litter. So I knew that it was essential in forest ecosystems as carbon recyclers. And I think it's really important for us to understand these mushrooms that have these important roles in these ecosystems, especially in a place like Madagascar. And Dennis loves Matt Marasmus. He does a lot of work on Marasmus, and so I had him as a resource, and I really thought that, that would be good for me to be able to work with him intimately with this particular genus. I chose Madagascar because it's an important area to study for biodiversity. As you may know, it's a biodiversity hotspot of the world, and I think that's really great when you're trying when you're trying to look at evolution. You want to try to focus on all these places that have really rich diversity, so that you can get those. Um, dynamic evolutionary trees, and I'm hoping that's what I'm going to see with my results. Tropical biotas act as natural laboratories, and so I wanted to take advantage of the fact that it's a really great place to collect and do research. And I also wanted to survey in an area that was very understudied. I like to be a big fish in a small pond, and I knew that Madagascar had little research done especially with Marasmius, and so it was the world was my oyster in terms of collecting and sampling. Um, and I also always wanted to go there, and per what Brennan said, you know, he really encouraged me to sort of go for my dreams, go for as far as I wanted to go, and I wanted to go to Madagascar, so I wanted to make it happen. But um, it's pretty far away. <laughs> it's hard to get there. It's really expensive. And I had no idea where I was going to get the money, where I was going to get the support. I didn't know anybody over there, and I didn't know what to do. So I looked to my other colleague, Miko, who's in the room right now, and he suggested I contact the California Academy of Sciences uh, right over here. They have a biodiversity research station there that started in 2006, uh, pretty recent. And so I contacted some of the botanists over at the Cal Academy and told them about the work that I wanted to do and why I thought it was important. And although they're not very focused on fungi, they do have a lot of botanists over there and they do have a station. And so they invited me to come, but they said, sorry, we can't pay for you. So then it became an issue about funding. Where was I going to get all this money to travel all the way across the world to collect some tiny little mushroom that I think is important? There's the Cal Academy, just the, roof, the living roof there. If you haven't been, it's really amazing. And up in the left-hand corner there is the Biodiversity Research Station in Madagascar. Um, keep that picture in your mind, because I will show you that picture again, but I'll add a little something to it later. So I did something kind of uh, different. I kick-started my way to Madagascar. I did some research, and I didn't see any science projects on Kickstarter before, but I am not afraid to step into unknown realms. And so I contacted Kickstarter, I made sure I could do the projects, and I worked with Miko and Brennan to make my video. In fact, if you Google Jackie Shea Madagascar mushrooms, you are sure to find my video. Do we not get to see the video? I didn't put it in. Oh. <laughs> it's 47 seconds, but I didn't know if I had a minute in 47 seconds. But if, <laughs> if you have a minute in 47 seconds, feel free to look at it yourself. Um, this is what my page looks like. Uh, I put up this page on November 27, 2013, and it went live. I, it was up for 30 days, and I wanted to raise $5,000. That was my goal. Um, come New Year's Day, I actually got $7,682. So I exceeded my goal substantially, which actually ended up working out really nice. I spent all the money. <laughs> uh, and, and since then, I've actually encouraged a lot of my colleagues to use Kickstarter for small science projects, things that only require a couple grand, and maybe it's just too much to apply to federal funding. I've actually helped three of my colleagues be able to fund their own research through Kickstarter. And so it's a frontier that I'm hoping will be expanded in terms of science. And I think it's a really great way to go for funding when it comes to small projects. I'm not talking about these $150,000 <coughs> projects, you know. Although people like Louis Schwartzberg, uh, who does the slow motion flower pictures on Netflix, like Flowers of Life and Wings of Life, he did a Kickstarter for 150 grand. So it's possible, but you have to be someone like Louis Schwartzberg. 
So then, you know, it's January 1st, 2014. I've got my plane ticket to leave in 13 days, and I have a lot to do between January 1st and January 14th. So I had to get vaccines, I had to uh, get bug repellent, collecting equipment, talk with Dennis about you know, how I can the how I can find marasmias and how I take notes on them, and I had to learn how to use a color guide, and I had to get like a lot of Ziploc bags, like more Ziploc bags than I ever thought I could ever have at one point in time. Yeah. Um, I had to contact all the people in Madagascar and make sure they knew I was coming and work with everything. So it was just this crazy couple of weeks, and so these are some Instagram pictures I took uh, right before I left with my packing. So finally, I'm ready to go, and it was quite a trip. I uh, went from San Francisco to New York, New York to Johannesburg, and then Johannesburg to Antenna Narivo, which I, from now on, will call Tana, or Tana. So if I say Tana, I'm talking about Antenna Narivo, which is the capital of Madagascar. It's right in the center. And I have it here on the map, so that's where I flew into. Anytime I'm talking about location, there will be a map on the screen for your reference. So just kind of pay attention to where we are in the country. Um, it was 36 hours of just flying, uh, let alone the two hours that it took to actually get to the city center. Uh, this is me in front of the research station, which I told you to remember, right? So there it is, and there's me, and I'm happy because I'm there. <laughs> I'm sweaty and I'm dirty and my bags didn't show up, so I ended up having to wear these clothes for like four days. Uh, I was really stinky after those four days and I was really happy when I finally got my bags. It was like, I did change my clothes, it's really great. Um, this is the final aircraft I took from Johannesburg to, to Tana, and it was this tiny small plane. And this is the eastern coast of Africa, this is Mozambique over here, this is the east coast of Mozambique, which I thought was really cool. Even though I've been on Morocco on the west coast of Africa for two years, I've never seen the east coast, so it was a really exciting time for me. So I met up with the people I needed to meet while I was there with the Cal Academy. They showed me around the town, they showed me around the research station, they introduced me to everybody. Um, and then we spent two days running around town getting our collecting permits. Uh, because we're collecting in national parks, so we had to go through a huge process of getting all these permits to collect and also take the specimen out of the country. Uh, luckily, they had a lot of experience doing this with the Cal Academy, so I didn't have to do anything, which was great, because I didn't know what to do, I didn't speak Malagasy, I spoke a little French, and that was not enough, probably, to get me through permits. Uh, and I have this picture here, because this is sort of how I felt running around these days going through traffic, there's no street lights, there's no stop lights, there's no lines on the road, it's just this flow of cars moving in and out, and I'm like, I don't know how you're making this happen, but it's amazing. And uh, eventually we drive back to the airport, the two hours back to the airport to go pick up Danny, my colleague and photographer for the trip, and I was really happy when he was there because he brought my bags with them, which was great, <laughs> so I could finally change my clothes. On the way back from the airport, we saw our first mushrooms, which we were super excited for. Um, our, the person we were there with, uh, he sort of called these guys mobile markets. And the mobile markets would come up to your window when you're sitting in traffic, which there was a lot of traffic and they would sell you things right there. And we bought a whole basket of this Cantharellus Philiptorum for uh, only five American dollars, which was a pretty good deal. And we made this delicious white wine, cream sauce, and some pasta. Um, this is a 50 Adi Adi coin with some Bayo batteries on there, just to give you some size perspective. And I don't understand how to read this map. I think it's really pretty. You know, there's pretty pictures, and there's some rivers, and this famous palm tree, and, you know, there's a river. <laughs> I don't know. So I, this, is, this is the information we're provided, so I was glad I had a lot of help. And here's the help. I had a huge team with me. Um, these are all the people that are really excited about what we're doing. So um, this is Team Ramafana from left to right. This is Emil. Emil was the mycologist from Tana. He is very knowledgeable about um, anything mycologically oriented, and so and I'm still in contact with him to this day. So that was a really great connection that I got to make. Um, this man right here, Dada Paul, he was very quiet and very reserved, but uh, an incredible man, very knowledgeable. We made sure that everywhere we went, we had a local 
uh, floral expert, like somebody who knew all of the plants very well. Because although I was working mostly with botanists, aside from the meal, the plants differ so much all over Madagascar that we had to make sure that we had somebody that knew the area specifically. And so each time we have a different person. And Dada Paul was the person from Ramafana. He's a well-known botanist in the area, and he was also a well-respected leader among the community. I could hand this man a dried-up twig with the little marasmus coming out of it, or a little piece of the leaf, and he could identify that plant to species, which I, some botanists, like some of the best botanists here in America, can't even do that. So it was pretty impressive how intimately he knew the plants. Um, this is Paul. He works with a government organization responsible for making sure they know what type of research is going on in the national park. So he was just sort of like the government eye. So I just made sure to watch what I said whenever I was around him. But he was nice. He was a nice guy. Um, this is Rocky, our amazing Rocky man, uh, Danny, and myself. So the second we entered into the national park boundary, I found this and I was so excited because this was my first time finding Marasmius and I was just so excited that I could see it and find it. And I flew all the way here and you know it's all coming together. You know, it's all happening. So um, this is my first one. This is not the best picture, don't worry. This is just a picture I took really quickly because of my excited taste, my hands were shaking. Um, but while I'm sitting there taking notes on this particular collection, Danny has run over to this guy, oh, wow. um, this beautiful cordyceps. Uh, this cordyceps was sticking out just like this, and it's got this beautiful sort of rusty coral color, and it's coming out of a cicada larvae, and it is specific to that particular stage of that insect development. So if the cicada evolved to a different point of its life cycle, it, this particular cordyceps wouldn't affect it. Hey, Jack, which is really cool. Yeah. I think a lot of people here don't know what cordyceps is. Cordyceps. Thank you. Um, <laughs> cordyceps are a type of fungus, if you've ever heard of the zombie fungus, they infect a particular insect that they have go evolved with, and they affect that insect's brain and sort of tell that insect to either like climb high, or in our case, climbing high doesn't really matter. So they would actually climb into the trail. So a lot of time we would find cordyceps right to the trail because that's an open spot for the uh, fruiting bodies to come out and then take out their spores like that. Because sometimes in these dense forests, going up doesn't give you that opportunity to sort of have that open space. It's so packed. Uh, so we would find most of the cordyceps we found were just right on the edge, right where the trail and the forest met, which is really cool. And nice for us, because we can't even get in there. So it's great to be sitting right there. Um, so what happens is fungus comes in and infects the cicada larvae and then the cicada larvae just goes like zombie mode and just starts walking over to the trail and then it slowly dies. <laughs> and then this beautiful fruity body will come out and um, will create uh, spores that will come out from there. Thanks, Dex. <laughs> So I'm just going to show you um, some of the mushrooms that we found in Ranufana. Having a Garifales. Avalachia. Calathella digitiformis. This was actually described by Dennis from Bali. Uh, here's some more signage. <laughs> so again, thank you, Rocky, for telling me where to go. Um, here's what I'm talking about with the forest. So uh, we pretty much had to stay on trail. We didn't have, uh, we had some machetes, but there's just no way you can just slash your way through this. It's just so dense and thick. So we pretty much had to stay on trail. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of different types of things. I think that we ended up collecting different marasmias from like at least like 12 different species. Crazy. Another Pavalachia. Wow. Phaeoclepulina cyanocephala. Uh, Emil found this one, and I've never seen him jump so high. Uh, he was really excited about it. He had his little, I, we have these crazy cameras that we brought in. Emil has this tiny little pointing shoe. And you know, he's looking at us, like kind of do these big setups with these cameras. And he's coming in with his little pointing shoe. He's like, can I go over there? <laughs> this was his favorite. 
Um, so that's me vigorously taking notes on fresh material because uh, my particular genus of mushroom, uh, I have to take notes immediately because if I don't, uh, the colors can change, the sizes can change, so many aspects of it can change. So it's important for me to know immediately at least what the color is and all the sizes. And then I can do other parts of it, like how, you know, what is the distance of the gills and all these other characteristics. Um, Again, I was working with botanists, so they were very curious about the whole, I mean, except for meal, they were very curious about the whole mushroom thing. And so, uh, although for the most part, Rocky and Dada Paul were kind of just geeking out on the plants, every once in a while, Dada Paul would pick up uh, some Erasmus that I was collecting, and he was just so fascinated that I was fascinated, that I came all the way over here from San Francisco to look at it. So it was kind of a nice opportunity to sort of educate each other on stuff, which was nice. Another Erasmus. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> so this is on a bamboo leaf. We've got a lot of bamboo. So how? Why is the cat? Uh, this guy is probably uh, you know like four to twelve millimeters. Probably. I have some uh, scale bars on some of them. Some of them, yeah. Yeah, not all of them. Um, this guy, I just kind of, I wandered off on my own at one point, and I had my iPhone, and I just put, found this, and I took a picture, so it's just a little iPhone picture of a poor little function. So for Kickstarter, we sort of gave out gifts, um, as that's part of the Kickstarter deal, and you give out presents and, and for, to trade it for money, and my gifts were these really beautiful, high-quality pictures, and this is the most popular one. I think I sent out like 20 of these pictures to people, so... Um, I wanted to show that one with two guys. And there's a scale bar there to sort of give you an idea. So What's the substrate? Um, a leaf. <laughs> <laughs> I actually did, because I was working with such skilled botanists, I actually ha I marked down every single substrate, and I am going to be looking at specificity, but that's not something I'm dealing with right now, and I don't remember. I can tell you what number this mushroom is, but I don't know like what substrate it is right now. I can't go that far back in my yeah. Um, the little black spots on like are those like other molds or other or just random? No, that's just dirt. This is no, not dirt. Well, this guy, it's this, yeah. these little dots, molds. Oh, ask on my seats. Excuse me. <laughs> Allow me to correct myself. These are ask on my seats. I'm not sure. That's a large one. Because 
it's sort of stressful to be told, like, I'm this one tiny little <laughs> <laughs> piece forest, you know, we're like, okay, you know, I hope that happens. But we did, and it was awesome. Um, and they have these incredible blue-gray stipes, this really beautiful, distinctive color. Uh, I really love that picture. Centropia. Day in the life of field researcher. This tiny thing over here is Danny <laughs> amongst this huge. Um, so in this particular forest, it is a combination of primary growth and secondary growth. Uh, this particular region was primary growth. And uh, that's me. I had to keep an umbrella on the uh, on the marasmus that I was taking notes on because if the sun was on for too long, they would start to desiccate and I could the notes weren't as good. So I had to make sure they were in the shade and I was writing scratch scratch chicken notes as fast as I could. How much did it rain since you were talking about bees in the It rained every afternoon. Every afternoon. So we would leave at like 7 o'clock in the morning. We would stay out until about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And then we would head back and uh, eat and drink. And then um, we would take, and then Danny and I would stay up all night taking notes. So whenever we were in the field, I didn't sleep. <laughs> I just kept going until we got back and I could have a day of the rest. Um, this is one of my favorites. It has a really beautiful lavender color. So I put a set on a stick bug, and it's got that gorgeous color to it. Moon Rasmus. Isaria. So this is the asexual stage of cordyceps, not on the inside. Moon Rasmus. Did you say not on the insect yet? Insects in the wood. Insects in the wood. <laughs> <laughs>
He was also the local policeman. They have like multiple jobs. <laughs> he also was the local botanist. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. It's like the JR of Andassi Bay. <laughs> And I was confused because I knew that we wanted to collect in forests, but this is like the grassland. So I was like, where are we? I don't know. Like we drove all the way up there and then I get there and I'm just like I'm sweating in the car and I'm like, I don't know if we're supposed to be here. But then we round this corner and it's just this patch of forest, this huge patch of forest that has been um, conserved over time, which is um, it was crazy. So we got to collect in there. Jackie, so really that used to be forest. Or this was always grass. So they think local, um, the local people think that it used to be forest and it's been cut over time, and the grassland has come up since then. Other people argue though that it was all grassland and the forest sprung up. So it's in debate, but I think it's probably this has come up secondary because this patch of rainforest was just so it was just you know it's kind of outlined really peculiarly. The Sentinel brews bright green. The Smidu Calatella. Yeah, Got it. Got it. So, um, Dennis sort of just informed me about this guy, but uh, I thought this was a Marasmus until I looked at it more closely. As you can see, there's obviously no gills here, but it's sort of like an inside out mushroom. The stipe is actually attached to the back here rather than to the inside, and then it sort of hangs out and it's got these little hairs on top. Beautiful little guy. Spores develop inside the <coughs> Yes. It's the city. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Once you start taking pictures of caterpillars, it's probably the end of the day. Um, this was actually a, this was the day where um, the poachers were coming and the loggers were coming and we could hear them. And uh, our local guide said we probably should get out of there, so we left. But we left on a good note because this rainbow came. This is our last day in the field. It was like, hey, it's for being here. The turtle lanterns. This car is amazing. If you ever get a chance to ride in one. So then we went back to the station and we spent the last few days um, packing the material and taking notes and just making sure that everything, we got everything in this one box, which was really amazing. And I decided to spend the extra money to FedEx it, which I was really happy about because I think it arrived before I did. <laughs> um, it was all safe and sound, which was great. Then we got hungry and so we went to the local market and we found these incredible blue chanterelles. Cantharellus congolensis, they were delicious. We sort of did a chanterelle taster. We bought all these different chanterelles from this market and we cooked them all with some butter and a little bit of salt and we just did a taste test. Um, this was Danny's favorite, it wasn't my favorite. I liked the, I liked the other ones better. They were just more buttery. But these were really rich in flavor. And we spent um, a couple more days just collecting around the station. So here's the station. All around the station was a zoo that's maintained by the staff here and the herbarium, which you can't see, but it's back here. Uh, the herbarium's huge. It contains about 140,000 specimen of plants. They don't have any fungi in there, but Emil wants to change that. And so I fully support him changing that. And I hope some of the collections that he got from this trip will go towards that. And Emil uh, had us over for dinner, um, and his wife prepared this amazing meal for us, which we really enjoyed. That was her more last day. And uh, then we came back, and since then I have been working on uh, describing each of the Marasmus uh, collections that I had. I'm doing all the microscopy, uh, using my macro notes, sequencing their DNA, my collections, and some earlier collections from 2006, which were in these green locations here. Who did this? Um, this is Antonin and Buick. Buick? Bike. 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 Um, they are from France and they collected in 2006 and they had about 19 specimens they collected. I have 18 of those that I am sequencing and 
and I will be doing phylogenetic analysis of the whole thing. So here's all the collection sites, which I think is pretty good for a master's project. And that's me extracting DNA, which I'm really good at. <laughs> and thank you. And are we Part two of this talk, which will probably be September of next year. Yeah, I got a question. Danny's not coming back from Indocamp, is he? He told me he is. He is, okay. Then I won't have yeah. that question. He told me he is. That's one of the only reasons he's coming back. Yeah, I would do that though. Yeah, okay. Back up. Okay. Oh, and then Dr. You all deserve to see the ringtail lemur, which is sort of like the famous Madagascar lemur. I did see a lot of lemurs while I was there, but I just I was so busy on the ground, it's hard for me to like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know much about fungal DNA, but um, is it like a is it like a single strand within? Cell or? Uh, it's still double-stranded DNA, and what I'm doing is I'm looking at a particular region. Uh, it's called the ITS region, and this is sort of known as the fungal barcode. And the reason why is because it's highly conserved over time. And so when you're looking at evolution, it's really great to analyze this particular region of the DNA because it's easy to compare it to other um, to each other, and um, you can sort of delineate the species much easier that way. Okay. Um, so you mentioned that not that many people have done collections and kind of diversity studies in Madagascar with fungi. Um, was it just you and the guys in the French guys in 2006? Or for Marasmus, there was a study done on um, agarics, where they did a big collection of agarics, but no molecular work. But what about the local mycologists? Is he not, is he not the they actually have collected a lot of fungi, but they don't. Take, we taught Amino how to take proper notes because they don't take proper notes on their collections, and so they know, you know, genus and they have a couple descriptions, but um, they don't take as much effort to look at the microscopy, and um, they obviously don't do any molecular work. So we were giving them a lot of insight onto how to kind of get a little bit more detail when you're taking notes on them, and then the importance of accessioning them in the herbarium because if there's an herbarium there and there's dry material. Just make the effort to put it in there and log it, but um, they, you know, they're understaffed, they don't have money, so it's hard. That Were those Volvarella in the corn husk pile edible? Uh, yes. Were they soaked? <laughs> well, we, at the, I personally, and Danny as well, we were not comfortable telling them that they were, but now looking back on it, I realize that they were. Oh, we so were, you didn't tell them? We didn't tell them that they were. Uh, we said, um, you know, give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> it is sort of like saying, you know, you can try every mushroom once, so we sort of said that to them, and uh, I sort of said that in French to them. <laughs> it was a funny joke. <laughs> funny moment. So I think Rocky got his PhD here, or, or is getting it, or in Michigan. He got it here, yeah. Yeah, so is there a university there? Like, is there any way for a local botanist to get higher education? Yeah, there is a university there. Um, I don't know about local botanists necessarily, but they have um, interns, like they have a really strong internship program where they have students who are in the university that intern with the herbarium and at the research station doing um, a lot of microscopy, a lot of uh, herbarium accessioning, and so I met a lot of those students. But um, I don't know if they do a lot of necessarily field work and collecting and not all the work. I think they're also trying to find funding to send some of their students here. So sort of outsourcing again. Were any of the species undescribed? 
Um, I'm assuming that some of them are inscribed, but I'm not sure which ones are yet, but I'm excited to find out and then name them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, I was just going to ask if you happen to know of any efforts or, or maybe we can start an effort for um, like getting, I don't know, like the local people actually educated so that they can then collect themselves because I would think then the like their you know, tools to other tools. This is very, like, I don't know if you do Kickstarter or not. I know, right? Kickstarter for everything. <laughs> Um, I we talked a lot with Anil about you know how do we how do we move forward you know how can we help like what can we do what sort of networking can, can happen how can we help make mycology a bigger thing in Madagascar because it's just it's almost unheard of anywhere you go you start talking about mushrooms people are like hi <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> so. Uh, it's just there's not enough people over there to sort of help with that frontier, but there is general interest, and we did try to make sure that everywhere we go, we talked about it, thought people was interested, but they just have much bigger issues to think about than like what types of mushrooms are in their neighborhood, like how they're going to put dinner on the table that night, and where the fuel is coming from. Yeah. So it's a really poor country. I said I was I, I had a lot of perspective on it. Concern, you know, the things that I was asking them to think about were sort of very low on their priority list. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.